delivering today's Career to the World. It is Monday, September 9th here in Seoul. The news today starts now. Typhoon Lingling took lives and left a trail of destruction around South Korea. The government is using all resources to conduct emergency restorations. The South Korean delegation plans to lodge a strong complaint about food safety and the rising sun flag issue at international meetings on the Tokyo Paralympics. At this year's IFA, where technology is showing AI connecting places through a home took spotlight, Korean tech giants unveiled their latest advanced home appliances. Welcome back, I'm Choi Gyeon, and let's take a look at today's top stories. Typhoon Ling Ling that swept through Korea over the weekend left three people dead and 24 injured in its wake. The government estimated that the typhoon damaged about 9,400 facilities with heavy rains and strong winds. The Central Disaster and Safety Countermeasures Headquarters reported Typhoon Ling Ling took three lives here in the nation. In Buryeo, a woman in her 70s was killed when she was swept up by the gale force wind. A driver in his 30s died when a wall fell on him at a university hospital parking lot in Incheon. In Paju, Gyeonggi-do province, one of the roof panels that flew off during a repair killed the man in his 60s. The year's 13th typhoon also injured 24 people, including firefighters and police officers, out on disaster control calls. A house in Busan, Jeollabuk-do province, was completely destroyed leaving its two residents homeless. More than 94,000 facilities nationwide were damaged, according to an official tally. Over 400 homes, factories and stores were flooded, and some 600 greenhouses and 70 fish farms were battered. Ling Ling's powerful winds uprooted some 5,000 roadside trees and damaged more than 1,200 traffic signals and streetlights. Strong winds were responsible for causing more than half of the 14,000 hectares of total crop loss. One of the most powerful typhoons to hit Korea knocked down a natural monument fir tree at Hinsa Temple and damaged 24 other cultural properties across the nation. Ling Ling also left roughly 160,000 homes nationwide with no power. Prime Minister Lee Nagyon convened a meeting to review typhoon damage and instructed officials to use all administrative resources to carry out emergency restorations. He also instructed relevant ministries to assess the losses of insured households in rural areas before Chuseok and pay up to 50 percent of the insurance payment in advance. The year's 13th typhoon Ling Ling also wreaked havoc in North Korea as it clawed its way through the Korean peninsula. North Korean authorities tallied aid casualties and reported damage and restoration efforts in an unusually prompt manner, demonstrating a disaster management system vastly different from previous ones. Gale force winds ripped apart a roof and knocked down crops. Streets were flooded and roadside trees uprooted. <laughs> The Korean Central News Agency reported that as of yesterday, Typhoon Ling Ling left five people dead and three injured. The news outlet also reported that some 460 homes and 15 public buildings were damaged or flooded and 458 square kilometers of farmland affected. Korean Central TV aired the extent of the damage in a breaking news format and urged a speedy recovery. It's unusual for North Korean authorities to issue typhoon alerts in advance, to convene emergency meetings, and to promptly announce damage statistics. The Pyongyang regime must have come to realize the seriousness of disasters, as the country suffered a series of natural disasters such as the Great Flood of 2016. Consequently, the country operated a disaster management system quite different from previous ones. North Korean authorities seem to be touting the results of their thorough preparation and prompt restoration in an effort to unite its people and strengthen the regime. Japan has decided not to ban the controversial rise in sun flag from the 2020 Olympic Games in Tokyo. And concerns are also rising over its plan to use food ingredients from Hokushima for athletes participating in the Olympics. 
The worrying situation will likely repeat at the 2020 Paralympics and a meeting opened upon September 8th in Tokyo among heads of Paralympic teams from nations taking part in the Games. At the meeting, the Korean delegation will lodge a strong complaint about the rising sun flag issue and the safety of Hokushima produce that could possibly be contaminated with radiation. The 2020 Tokyo Paralympic Games medals. They are inscribed with designs resembling the rising sun flag, a symbol of Japan's past imperialistic aggression. Despite mounting controversy, the organizing committee has no plans to replace the design, explaining that it was inspired from a fan. Japan also decided to allow the displays of the rising sun flag at the Olympic and Paralympic Games in Tokyo, in spite of repeated opposition from Seoul. The Korea Paralympic Committee will call on the country to change its stance at a meeting of team heads from nations participating in the Games, which will be held until September 12th. Korea expressed strong opposition to the use of the rising sun flag at a bilateral meeting with the Japanese organizing body, which was held on September 8th before the main session. The two sides will continue discussions on the safety of food ingredients from Fukushima and the inclusion of Korea's Tokyo Islands in a Japanese map posted on the organizing committee's website. The global sporting event is about promoting peace and harmony. But unless issues of the rising sun flag and food safety are resolved, the reputation of the games could be tarnished. Korea plans to draw international support through the meetings. President Moon Jae-in formally appointed Cho Buk as Justice Minister on Monday, along with the appointments of five other ministers or minister-level officials. The Supreme Court has sentenced former Chungcheong Namdo Province Governor An Hee Jong to three years and six months for abuse of power and sexual misconduct. An was indicted for sexually assaulting his female secretary from July 2017 to February last year. The Ministry of National Defence has launched a centre tasked with providing support to the victims of deadly humidified disinfectants used in the military. The Korea Expressway Corporation will deploy drones on 10 highways nationwide to crack down on traffic violations during the Chuseok holiday period. Violations subject to crackdowns include driving on bus lanes and roadsides and cutting in. Korean home appliance makers have unveiled state-of-the-art 8K TV at this year's IFA Consumer Electronics Show, which is underway in Berlin, Germany. The exhibition also showcases progress in a cutting-edge technology in which artificial intelligence is used to connect places throughout a home. LG Electronics has released the world's first 88-inch 8K OLED TV. The TV boasts a super ultra-high definition panel with 33 million pixels, four times more than those of existing UHD displays. LG Electronics says the new product features a perfect 8K resolution as it recreates lifelike colors and picture quality by a degree of 90 percent, which is far higher than the international standard of 50 percent. Samsung Electronics also unveiled a 55-inch QLED 8K TV. With a plan to sell the TV in some 30 countries, Samsung will also focus on developing content tailored for the new TV in collaboration with global companies. 삼성전자는 55인치부터 98인치까지 QLED 8K 라인업을 확대하고 8K 컨텐츠를 위한 생태계 구축도 강화하여 새로운 TV 시청 경험을 계속 만들어 나가겠습니다. The market for 8K TVs has grown by a factor of 12 year on year. It is also expected to expand fourfold next year. However, the fact that 8K quality broadcast cameras and equipment have not yet been developed is a hurdle that must be overcome. Meanwhile, AI technology that connects home appliances around the house is continuing to evolve. Global competition in the AI home appliance sector is heating up, with European and Chinese companies showing off their technological prowess. Korea is facing Turkmenistan in a qualifier for the 2022 Qatar World Cup. The Korean team's captain, Son Heung-min, is gearing up for the upcoming match with strong determination. He pledged to do his best to win the game. Here's more. 
Though the match between South Korea and Georgia ended in a disappointing 2-2 tie, Son Heung-min and Hwang Yoo-jo's amazing chemistry gave hopes that the Texas Warriors can only grow stronger. Son, the team captain, gave no excuses during the post-game interview and instead vowed to take charge and ensure a win in the upcoming match with Turkmenistan, emphasizing the need to be like a tiger that gives it all even when hunting a rabbit. He urged the team to do their best to win the first qualifier for the 2022 Qatar World Cup. Horangga to kemal chabul te do chugrimeun dae sanda. Geureum mal i itteusi chukki salgiro cheonbuto heya jae geonggil igil su ittaga seungal hage teobune. Manager Paolo Bento switched up the training regimen to be better prepared for the next match. The focus is on a flank attack to break through Turkmenistan's defense formation. Instead of experimenting with options, he will employ a four-back strategy with full-backs to ensure Pang and Son secure more chances to score goals. The team has repeatedly practiced fast, precise counterattacks through many games. Priority is given to maintaining key players' strength and stamina. Team Korea will arrive in Turkmenistan on September 9th and will begin training to adjust to the local conditions. It is crucial for the Tagak Warriors to quickly adapt to the unfamiliar environment of the Central Asian country after having stayed in Turkey for a long period of time. On today's Hadao Korea, we talk about K-pop singers being nominated at the prestigious E-People's Choice Awards and actor Yoo Jae-te taking part in a charity marathon. K-pop groups BTS and Blackpink have been nominated in three different categories at this year's E-People's Choice Awards set to be held in November. This and more on today's cultural news. The faces of K-pop boy band BTS and girl group Blackpink have been nominated for competition in the same categories at a U.S. Pop Culture Awards. The two bands are competing in three categories of group, music video, and concert tour of 2019 for this year's E! People's Choice Awards. The annual awards held since the 1970s picks the best artists in 43 different categories in TV, film, and music through fan votes. BTS and Blackpink are vying for a win with their respective hit songs, Boy With Love and Kill This Love. The voting outcome of K-pop fans worldwide draws keen attention. Actor Yoo Jae-tae will take part in a charity marathon, which is a campaign to provide clean water in Africa. This Run for Water global event taking place on October 3rd is hosted by the relief organization World Vision. The campaign aims to promote the water shortage situation in Africa and raise public awareness. You and other participants will run six kilometers, the average distance African children walk to get water, in a bid to share their pain for at least one day. Proceeds from the event will be used to supply clean drinking water in different parts of Africa. Yujite has been an exemplar in practicing what he believes in by taking part in various good causes since the year 2009. His good deeds include supporting a kindergarten project in Myanmar by donating his paycheck on the project. And that's all we have for you on News Today. Thanks so much for joining us. We will see you again at the same time tomorrow. Goodbye.